Happy Deaf Awareness Week. My name is Jessica Murphy, and this is my sign name. Happy Deaf Awareness Week. My name is Rachel Watson, and this is my sign name. This week, we are excited to celebrate Deaf Awareness Week with our guest, Salesforce developer, Mario Essig. In this video, we are exploring the top five things to know about software development lifecycle. Welcome. It's Rachel and Jessica from 100 Days at Trailhead, the place where the tech community comes to learn Salesforce, learn tech, get inspired, have fun, and invest in ourselves. Whether you are brand new to learning Salesforce and starting from the beginning, or mid-career and skilling up for that new opportunity, we are your trail guides here to support you with an itinerary to help you get where you're going. You are in the right place. If you are new to our channel, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so you can be notified when we release a new video. In the description below, you can find links on everything we mention in this video, in addition to links we find helpful like books that have helped us and our friends along our tech and Salesforce journeys. To find other helpful Salesforce and tech content, visit our blog at 100daysoftrailhead.com. In this video, Mario Essig is discussing the software development life cycle. Mario is the owner, consultant, certified admin, and Salesforce developer at Geek Panda. He has been mingling with data for over 13 years and loves it. He's an avid runner, free diver, outdoor adventurer, and has a great wife. Your quest, should you choose to take it, is to journey with us through the adventure of learning software development life cycle. Your quest begins now. Hello everyone, I'm Mario Essig with Geek Panda. I am here to talk about the top five things to know about software development lifecycle. Are you ready? We'll start with the top five things to know. First, you'll need to know what software development lifecycle is. Second, you'll need to know what minimal viable product or MVP for short means and how it is important. You'll need to know why it is important to get executive sponsors, how it is important to recognize those who are involved in the process. And last, you'll need to know about DevOps SDLC, which is a hot trend nowadays in the IT world. Software development lifecycle, known as SDLC, which I will use going forward. SDLC is a way to measure, collect, and improve the development process of things you want to build. I have seen a range of five to seven phases, but the standard is usually six phases, so I am going to walk you through those six steps. First, ideas will be envisioned of something you want to make happen. Then from that idea, the detailed requirements of what will be needed are identified, in other words, conducting an analysis. Once the requirements have been collected, the design and building phase takes place, making this thing now a tangible, visible product ready for use. From there, the product is deployed or implemented into the platform so everyone can use it. With user testing, we'll gather feedback that helps us identify any areas needing improvement. When testing is finalized, maintenance will take on monitoring quality, ensuring everything is working well. Those are the six phases of SDLC, and I will expand more on this topic as we move forward. Now, imagine a person who wants a car because they're tired of walking. If you were to ask what they wanted, they'd say, I want it to be red, a sports car that's fast, with comfortable seats, and is a convertible. After learning their wants, I start to build. It turns out to be a long process because I have to build the tires, axles, metal frame, the whole metal body. I also need to build the interior. Electric wires, seats, steering wheel, buttons to add UI, UX, the windows, then finally build the exterior, add metal covers, 
and paint them red. Once that's done, then comes the testing. As soon as everything looks good, I contact the customer after three, four months, maybe a year later, to deliver the product. The customer sees the product and realizes that it's too low and that they want more legroom because they're tall. The list of things that do not match the expectations of this customer could go on and on. That's an example of the old-fashioned way to approach the design process. It's called the waterfall process, and it usually takes forever. In the next slide, I will show an example to elaborate on that. So, it is very important to have a dialogue with the customer where you start by asking what the requirements are, such as, do you want wheels, and so on. In that case, it is better to focus on the MVP, again, which will be elaborated more in the next slide. With both MVP and Agile Waterfall, I mean Agile Process, you will be able to build part of the product, show the customer, ensuring you are meeting their needs at this point. From there, you can continue to build further into the next set of requirements, following up with the customer again. Ultimately, you'll use the SDLC process repeatedly instead of just once and move on. So first, you will identify the idea that the customer wants. Second, analyze by gathering requirements and clarifying what the requirements are. Third, you design the requirements. Fourth, implement or deploy. Fifth, test to make sure it passes QA. Then lastly, monitor to make sure nothing breaks. When everything looks good and the customer is satisfied, you can finalize this as the MVP. This is when you can move to the next idea, gather the requirements, design, implement, test, monitor, and repeat. You'll see the growth of the product, and there are so many more benefits that come from this method. It's faster and easier to use than waiting a year for a car. Now we'll talk about minimum viable product, MVP. A MVP is a version of a product with just enough features to satisfy early customers. Why just the minimums? Because when we deliver the minimums to customers and they experience using it, we benefit from early detection of them realizing their needs and wants may have changed or become clarified. This way, the process helps inform their thoughts about their idea or vision, and it's nice for them to be able to see and use the product while we are still building their idea or vision. Here's an example to help clarify MVP. If I were to build a car from start to finish and deliver it to a customer a year later, chances are the customer will be dissatisfied and want a number of changes, simply because our perspectives differ. See these pictures? Look at the one on the left. There's a young lady looking away with her jawbone revealed and wearing a hat. Now, look at the one on the right. There's an old lady looking straight out and a bit downwards, with a big nose, with her lips shown, and a shawl around her. Now look at the middle picture. Which does this picture represent? Actually, both. I can look at something, have a customer look at that same thing, and we will see this thing differently because our minds view it differently. This is where the analysis step is very important in the SDLC process getting clarification by asking questions about requirements. You really have to put yourself in their shoes, but remember to come back to your own shoes because you're the one who knows how the system works. I know the platform. I build using these tools. I see behind the scenes, like an engine, seeing all the nuts and bolts. This is where we can counter their requirements by offering a better alternative that may benefit them more something they may not have thought of on their own. This could lead to saving them time, reducing labor, budget savings, increased team performance, and increase the team's morale and sense of recognition. An open feedback loop is important for us. This can really cause a paradigm shift, where these conversations and counter offers lead to realizations of differing views, communication, and asking for clarification is an important part of SDLC. MVP is an important key in the Agile process. Remember the earlier example of building a car and relying on the traditional waterfall process? 
You can see in the clearly unhappy faces that the customer doesn't like having to wait for an eternity to get the car. And while they may be happy to finally get their car, the process could lead to misunderstandings, which means having to do it all over again and spending a lot of money. Instead, we can start with the original idea. The customer wants to be mobile. Wasn't that what triggered the idea of a car in the first place? To start, offer a skateboard that the customer can use immediately, something simple and small. After using it a while, the customer will find that he wants to have better control. Then you can offer a handlebar to add to the skateboard. The customer comes back saying he gets tired of standing, so you offer a bicycle. Next, the customer comes back saying his legs get tired and would like to, the bicycle to get automated. Then you build a motorcycle. The customer comes back again saying, I do not want to get wet in the rain and I want to be safe from potential accidents. This is where we finally get to a car, exactly what he wants. You see how the incremental steps and requirements identified along the way delivered towards the idea. Every step will benefit the company, benefit the individuals, it will benefit everyone. Agile is one of the hottest trends in SDLC nowadays. With all of that, it is very important to have executive support from managers, directors, and even the C-suite level of the company. They are the ones setting the path for the whole company. Essentially, they decide what will be the company's North Star. This guidance ensures that everyone is looking at the same star and knows they are on the same page as the executives. It also prevents compartmentalized processes within each department, taking groups in different directions, which can drive up cost, extend deadlines, and cause miscommunication. It's just better to have everyone on the same page. This will build and drive management consensus throughout the process, and it helps motivate users of the platform to move forward with adoption rather than delaying, which is beneficial because if they don't, it will turn out to be a worthless investment, so it is important to have executive sponsors involved. Once you have built, implemented, deployed, and have everyone using the product, it's important to recognize those who are the key players in the process. It boosts morale to see their contributions come to fruition. It is important that they feel included, and it's not just the IT people who built those things alone. There are others outside of IT who are the hidden key players. Managers who led processes, the person who came up with the idea, tested and shared feedback. There are also some people who are super users, who are heavily using the platforms and shared helpful feedback, even though they are not necessarily part of the IT team. So recognize those people as well. It creates a good Awana culture. I personally like to use Salesforce. They exemplify an Awana culture. Thanks to that culture, Salesforce has grown exponentially. Their culture is one of the reasons I'm a big fan of Salesforce. Creating a good culture helps fuel morale and keeps people motivated as they continue into the next cycle of SDLC process. It also leads to forming good relationships, effective processes, and great growth within the company. Now, for the last of the five things, DevOps. Remember, the waterfall and agile processes where I explained about the skateboard, scooter, bicycle, motorcycle, and car? Well, now there's a new process called DevOps. DevOps SDLC includes a cultural approach. It's no longer just a tool that doesn't account for cultural values. This is one of the reasons why I gave a hint about recognition earlier, as well as getting executive sponsors. It is somewhat important to have some emotional investment in the program or project. When you see something that you've worked on come to fruition and succeeds, it feels very rewarding. You want to pat yourself on the back and will want to do more. And now DevOps recognizes the importance of cultural values within the SDLC process. 
For so long, the IT process felt so robotic, where codes were built, delivered, and repeated. Basically, everything was just zeros and ones, a binary approach, which lacked emotional touch. With Culture Incorporated, the SDLC process becomes organic. You will grow. People will recognize you more. They also will want to work with you more often because you recognize them as well. Now, with the top five things that you just learned, go ahead and put them in practice. Soon you will recognize your growth and feel satisfied. Then, it's time to go to the beach, lounge with a cocktail, and celebrate. I'm happy you're here. And with that, we're at the end. What was your favorite software development lifecycle tip in the video? What advice do you have for implementing software development lifecycle? Comment below. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you've made it to this point, we want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Since you've stayed with us, here's a bonus. If you want to know more about software development lifecycle, you can go more in depth with the book, The Software Development Lifecycle, A Complete Guide. You can find the link in the description below. Thank you for spending time with us. Make sure you like this video. It helps a lot. Click subscribe and on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on Instagram, Twitter, and on our website at 100daysoftrailhead.com, all of which are listed below. Thank you for learning with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.